My talk is uh, about the robust secret sharing with almost optimal share size and security against the Russian adversaries. This is a joint work with search for. Here's the outline of my talk. First, I will introduce some background about the robust secret sharing scheme. Then I will take a review of our previous approach. And after that, I will introduce our new approach and give some remark on our new approach. And also there are some open problem. So first, uh, we are interested in the TN sequential scheme. And so what is the, this TN sequential scheme? And so we have a sequit S. We want to share it among n parties. So there are two parameters we are interested. So first is the privacy. So we call it uh, T privacy. If t any T parties learn nothing about S, so T will POS1 reconstruction. If any T plus one parties can completely recover S. So there are the famous Shamir sequential scheme can realize this TN sequential sharing scheme. Okay, so besides this uh, TN sequential scheme, we want the sequential scheme to be robust. Uh, um, look at this graph. We have uh, an honest dealer D and honest reconstructor R and N parties P1 to the PN. So the dealer D first uh, take an input uh, secret S. Then he generate N shares to N party. Each party receive a share. And so uh, diversity, he can corrupt the parties. Now the PN is corrupted. And so what, what, uh, what will happen in the, in the, during this uh, reconstruction phase? And in the reconstruction, the reconstructor R ask for each ask each party to send their share and the pn because he is corrupted he will send a modified share and uh, so the reconstructor r and he can still reco recover the secret s in the presence of some corrupted shares if there are not too many shares are corrupted he can still recover the secret s so this is called a robust secret sharing scheme the formal definition is the following uh, yeah, you see that uh, we have we secret sharing and secret S uh, and generate N share and uh, then the adversary he corrupted some of them. For example, he corrupted his shares. Uh, there's then the re the reconstructor he can recover this S from these uh, N shares in the presence of T corrupted shares. Um, so in this case, and we, we the corrupt shares can at, be at most uh, the number of corrupted shares can be at most half of the number of parties, half n. So the interesting case is n equals to t plus one. It's a called threshold case. And uh, yeah, there exists a robust equation scheme if we allow some small error probability. Yeah. Then we are interested in the overhead. We want the overhead to be as small as possible. Um, here in this work, we consider the Russian adversary model. So what is the power of this Russian adversary? What, they, what can they do? Um, first, they can select parties to corrupt. Um, so actually, he can once they corrupt the party, they see the shares held by this party. Besides that, in the order of adversary, they can do that. But the, the Russian adversary can do one more thing. Uh, this is uh, he can see the transmission between the other honest parties and the reconstructor. After he saw this transmission, and then he modified his, his shares based on what he see. And this gives this gives uh, more power to the Russian adversary. There are some non results. First, the first result is uh, a surplus equation scheme against a non-Russian adversary with optimal overhead. The kappa is uh, the security parameter, but there is another parameter log n which is absorbed in this O tutor. So this O tutor means that there's a log n factor since uh, we just ignore it because it's too small. Okay, so the, uh, our previous approach give present a robust sequential scheme achieving the Russian adversary security, but with, all, with not optimal overhead, because we have the kappa to times n to the epsilon, epsilon can be any small constant, but uh, it's, it's not log n small. So there are two independent works uh, achieved the optimal overhead against the Russian adversary. 
and their crypto 2020s works and our work our kitties work and both of them achieve the optimal overhead but it takes a completely completely different approach so in their paper they they achieve sm and their their round complexity is smaller or is they actually they have two two rounds and but uh, they require communication between parties and uh, our paper our works uh, only have five rounds but uh, we don't need the communication between parties and re reconstructor so this is uh, some difference between our two works okay let's uh, first take a take a review of our previous approach because we reuse some algorithm from our previous approach so we need to introduce our previous approach in advance so in, in our previous sharing scheme we have given a secret s uh, the data do the following things first they share s via a little bit codable version of champion sequence scheme instead of the the classic semi sequence scheme we use the folded resume code to do this list coded to achieve the list codable and then we 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 want to authenticate each share so for si si we want to authenticate si we use the mac to authenticate it actually but we don't want part one party to authenticate the rest all the all other parties share because it will incur uh, a very big overhead. Instead, we, we only, for each party, we only authenticate a small random subset of parties. This will make the share size red very small. But uh, then we, we need uh, some randomification, random verification graphs to, uh, to represent this, uh, this authentication relation, so, which we will introduce it later in our next uh, slide. Okay, so what is the verification graph? And this verification graph is a directed graph indicating the authentication relations. For example, in, in, our, in, our disk, in this graph, and we see that P1 authenticated P2 and P3 because uh, P1 has a direct edge to P2 and also direct edge to P3. And then also it is a P2 authenticated P3 because there is then direct edge from P2 to P3. We, we classify the parties uh, into two types due to this uh, verification graph. And uh, the, we call it uh, passive parties. If uh, the corrupted party do not modify their share SI and, they, and uh, the corrupted party is active, if they modify SI, why we could make this class classification? Because after we make this classification, we have these following properties. First, the, because the passive party they do not modify SI actually it it um, behaves like an honest party we cannot tell whether it's honest or passive if they I mean they do not corrupt uh, some of uh, the SI so in this case uh, the passive parties can always pass verification from the honest parties however I mean the passive parties they do, although they do not modify SI they can still pass information tell you tell what their dash tell the adversary what, what the shares they hold. Actually, they are not completely honest. For the active parties, actually, we can tell if it's active because they always build the verification from the honest parties. And for passive parties and uh, honest part, uh, active parties, and uh, they can either pass or fail the verifications from each other. I mean, it all depends on the strategy taken by the adversary. So. Yeah, it can. I mean, it the can. It varies, so you cannot tell. Okay, so what is the very construction schemes in our previous approach? And we have three round transmission, and so because the power the, we 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 will consider Russian adversary, so it's they are so powerful they can see the transmission between the parties and honest parties and the reconstructor. So we, we want to limit the power of this Russian adversary. So we introduce three round of transmission. After this three round transmission, um, there is an algorithm deciding whether people, the number of passive parties is small or big. If it is small, we use the graph algorithm to find the right, kind of, right code word. And this graph algorithm is based on some random expander graph. And so if uh, the number of passive parties is small, and if we start, then we start from an honest party and we'll 
and then and we use this uh, ran random graph expansion property and it will soon find identify lots of honest parties this is a kind kind of ideas behind this graph algorithm if uh, if the passive party the non passive party is big large actually we see that uh, most of the shares are not corrupted and then we use this list coding algorithm because uh, and and and, and it works because the most um, many shares are not corrupted, and this risk coding algorithm will output a list of candidates, including the right code words. Then we use uh, some candidate elimination algorithm to find the right code words from the list from this list. This is our reconstruction scheme in our previous approach. Okay, so let's then let's introduce our new approach. What is and let's kind of first make some comparison between our approach, new approach, and our previous approach. So there are some common points. We 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 share some common points. So first is we also divide the case between P is small and big. Why we di we divide the case because we reuse our graph algorithm in our previous approach to handle the case that P is small. So that's why we divide the cases. We also reuse the candidate animation algorithm, but uh, for different purpose. So actually. It, if the other this right candidate in which algorithm works, if they are small, uh, if the other uh, there are two conditions make it work. So the first condition is that the the, other, the right candidate is a right code word is inside the list. The second condition is that uh, the pass the number of passive party actually is not too small. Okay, then we also use the multiple round of transmission to restrict the power of Russian diversity. Also, there are some deviations. So we don't, the first deviation actually is quite interesting. Is that usually we are we we want the verification graphs information to be secret. So every party they will store their neighbor the information of verification graphs of their neighbors. I mean the the the, the people and the parties they verify they need to verify this kind of information. But there is a one but verification graph. We, we want to make the neighbor's information to be public, so no one can alter it. And the second deviation is that we make the cut. Also, we, we also divide the case, but uh, but with different threshold. In the, in our this work, we use the n over log n to be the to to divide it between small and big. In our previous approach, we use epsilon n. So that's the difference. Also, we replace the list coding algorithm with a new algorithm to handle the case that P is big. Why why we don't use list coding algorithm? Because we use a new threshold threshold case. So for n over log n, if there are the, the number of passive parties is only n over log n, and the list coding algorithm will will output an exponentially size. That is we want to avoid. That's why we we cannot use the list coding algorithm anymore. Instead, we use a new, we replace it with a new algorithm, and we do enumeration for p starting from n over log n. Uh, why we do this? Uh, why we do this enumeration? Because uh, yeah, we our new algorithm, it must uh, take and correct the input, the number of the p as, and it must be correct. Otherwise, uh, the new algorithm will not output the right candidates, the right code words, and. Uh, then we so that's why we invent all the p but but how can we make sure that uh, we can find the right code word if we 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 have enum we enumerate enumer all the p and there are some p they will output uh, i mean all the wrong candidates because we have thanks to this uh, candidate elimination algorithm okay so let's take uh, an overview of our new algorithm we do this enumeration and after do this uh, for each p, and we we will uh, the step one we will find a subset v consisting of many honest parties and some passive parties. That means v will there are no active parties will be in v. This is our the set of v we want we look for. We say that step one will succeed if the following holds: honest parties are the number of active parties by at least n over four log n. This hold for because of this enumeration. The second condition hold active party cannot be authenticated by honest party. It hold because of the our our Mac. Our Mac will make sure that it is this is always hold. 
So that there's a, a step two. What is step two? And uh, so we have a, we already have a subset of V consists of many honest parties and some passive parties. For the party not in V, we want to know that if it's good or not, it's honest or not honest. How do we know? We we are trust the parties inside V because they are either honest or passive because also the honest party is the majority. With uh, so so if if these parties is authenticated by many parties in V, then we we think we trust it and we put it into our V. Step and then if we collect enough parties and it the number of parties in V is big enough, then we can. Recover the circuit. So step two will succeed if the following holds: first, honest parties outnumber passive parties in V by n over log n. Actually, it 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 will not always hold. It it depends. If it's not hold, we turn to step three. It's hold, and actually step two already find the right code word. The second point is that the subset of authenticated neighbors is not corrupted. Actually, it it means that the authentic verification graph is made public in this step, and the second assumption, the second point is assumption of P is correct. Actually, yeah, if we yeah we assume that it's correct, and then we output the right code word, and then we just yeah assume that it's correct, because we have step four actually to. So let's go to step three. Yeah, step three says that uh, we use use the graph algorithm taking. The complement of V as the input set, the, uh, because of step if step two is fa uh, fails and step three will succeed because step three succeeds uh, if the number of passive parties in the complement of V is relatively small. Because it's if it's in V is big and uh, in in V V bar is small, so that that's why ste either step two or step three, um, um at least one of them will be will succeed. Then we go to step four because we assume that P is correct. Uh, the number of P, the input, uh, the number of passive party P is correct. Uh, so, so if it's not correct, uh, we will, I mean, the candidate in Amish algorithm will not uh, very uh, will not qualify it. It 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 can only spot the right candidate code word. Also, the step four succeeds if P is not too small. Actually, it 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 it, it this will be ensured by the enumeration. Okay, so let's uh, yeah, let's go to the conclusion. Yeah, we present a robust equation scheme against a Russian adversary that achieves the optimal shell size. So this is basically what we've done in this paper. So there are some still some open problems, and we are also interested in, and we want to maybe explore it in the future. And uh, so the first open problem is that can we find a simpler and a more practical solution to this problem? Because our current uh, solution, I mean, it's, it achieves optimal share size, but uh, it's rather complicated. Also, the crypto 2020 paper, I think the, the analysis, analysis and also the approach it, they take is also relatively complicated. So can we, and because the problem itself is very nature, it's a nature problem, so maybe we can find uh, more nature solutions and simpler solutions to this problem. The second question is that is it possible to design a linear time robust sequential scheme? We know there is exist linear time sequential scheme, so whether the rob we can achieve robustness in linear time. Yeah. This is our this is my talk. Thank you for your attention.